It's almost 2026, which means it's time for my annual How I'm Using Note Plan video. I'm going to focus on four main things today. One, how I'm using Apple shortcuts for quick entry into Note Plan because I'm really relying on that a lot these days. Two, a quick overview of my very simple daily workflow. Three, how I structure a typical note for meetings. And four, tracking projects with the new card or Kanban view. Let's dive right in using Apple shortcuts. So you'll see here, I have a couple of my most often used Apple shortcuts. I created them as a widget here for quick access. I also sometimes use it from the menu bar up here, but basically if you right click on your desktop and you edit your widgets, you can add different types of widgets. So I just chose shortcuts here, and then you can choose which type of a stack you want. I obviously went for this one, but let's go ahead and just choose this one quickly. The way that you edit which of the shortcuts that actually show up is you add it, and then you can just right click, edit shortcuts folder. If you wanna choose from a specific folder, I think the way, I'm not really a pro at this, but I think the way that they just manually sort is in order here. So I just make sure that when I have this eight layout, whatever the first eight are, are the eight that show up here. And I just color code them by right clicking, change icon, and then you can choose the icon and you can choose the color. All right, so now that those shortcuts are there, let me delete this one. Let me show you the ones that I use most often. First of all, quick open to today. What it does is it opens my today's note in a window of its own. I use that all the time. So even if I'm working like on a different desktop, I can just quick open today's note. I don't have any of the sidebars for distraction. I'm just quickly there, very quick access. Now for quick entry, I have add to today, add under heading and voice add that I use most often. Add to today is just going to allow you to add some text by typing. I have chosen to add that as an actual task. I'll show you how that's set up. Under heading, I add the task. When I press enter, I also can put it under one of my headings that's in my daily template. And then voice add allows me to obviously voice add. Now all of these can also be triggered using Siri on my phone and on my watch. The add to today, under heading, and voice add and I use them quite a bit. You don't even need to unlock your phone to use it. And on the go on my watch is very useful as well. To trigger it with Siri, you just call it whatever the shortcut name is. So keep that shortcut name kind of quick and simple. Voice ad is very easy for me. I say voice ad. I say, hey Siri, voice ad. What's the text? And I triggered her and she asked me, what's the text? I just say it as soon as I stop talking, it adds, it doesn't even open note plan. So it's quick, easy, great. Let me show you how the voice ad works and I will share these actual shortcuts. So you can just quickly add them. You don't need to do any of the work of typing this all in. I'll just add them and you can add them to your own shortcuts. So here's the voice ad, dictate the text. I have it stop listening after the pause. You can change that if you would like it. I just here chose to append it under my specific heading. So if you do download my shortcut, make sure that you delete this and you change it to whatever heading you wanna put it under. If you want it to just appear at either the top or the bottom, choosing append or prepend, you can just leave this under heading blank if you don't wanna specifically put it under any heading. Then you can choose if you want it to be a task, a text, heading, bullet, checklist, or just a quote, and that's really it. So that is how it works. Make sure if you have a watch and you wanna add it to your watch, you click on the I, you choose to show it on your Apple watch. I also chose to run it with a shortcut and I like to show it in the menu bar here. So that's why I have it checked in addition. Those are those three shortcuts. I also have one that specifically adds to my Friday note. The reason I have that is because there's certain things I like to just plop on Friday evening and then I'll delegate them for the weekend or I have some time to quickly do some stuff on Friday. So that's something that I do every week and I like to just pile them onto that Friday evening note. So let me show you how that works. Just add to Friday enter in whatever it may be. If I go to my Friday note for that week, so that's how it works, it's always the Friday of that week, you'll see that it goes under my evening heading, boom, it's right there. That one I was really excited about. 
I also have a quick open to the dashboard plugin, a search notes, which I use occasionally. Okay, so those are my most used ones personally, but one more that I did want to show you. I personally don't do detailed voice transcription, but if you do, then voice ad using ChatGPT can be super helpful. So this one will go ahead and listen to everything that you're saying, and then it will summarize it based on the prompts that you've given. Now, this particular one only works on my phone because I don't have the ChatGPT app on my Mac. I think you could probably use some Apple intelligence to do the same thing, but I have an older phone, don't have Apple intelligence on that. Anyway, the long way of saying what this does is I can then choose if I wanna summarize it, if I wanna create time blocks from the text I just said, if I just wanna clean it up, if I wanna create a task list, a bullet list, I can choose which one, and then it will send that long message I just talked out, it will send it to ChatGPT, it will either summarize it, clean it up, whatever you specified, and then it will put that into NotePlan. So that is very helpful. Then you can have one that's more specific, like this one, for example, I like a lot where you do it with voice dictation, it's gonna clean up the text that you've put in, it's gonna add it as a checklist item, and it's also going to then split out any tasks that you have said while you were talking to it. You can modify whatever you want to go into ChatGPT right here, and then see if anything looks like an action or to-do list, duplicate the content, revise it to be an actionable, blah, blah, blah. And then the rest you don't have to worry too much about. This right here is adding it under a specific heading called voice notes. So if the voice notes heading exists, add it under that heading. If not, then just add it to the note. But I will share this one too. And so many of these were created with the help of the note plan community. So I cannot take credit for creating all these myself. So those are some main ones. And I hope I did a decent enough job of explaining kind of how they work. But that quick entry is really nice when I'm working, I'm in the flow. I don't even need to open note plan and I can just quick add to today's note, type in whatever. Now, one more thing that is not an Apple shortcut, but I use it all the time is this Chrome extension, send URL to note plan. You can just go ahead and grab that. You can add in text before, you can add in text later, you can send it directly to note plan, or you can just copy it to the clipboard. So I'm gonna do that for this one. And then when I paste it in, it's all formatted nicely. A lot of times you can just grab the URL and it will also format nicely, but sometimes it doesn't. And so I can always use that shortcut to make sure it goes in nicely and I can just send it to note plan automatically and it will go into my daily note. I can even customize it to go under a specific heading. I showed how to do that in a previous video, I think my last year's video, so I'm not gonna get into that. That is something else that I just use so often, especially when I don't want too many tabs open, but I need to like go back to this tab instead of leaving that tab open to remember I need to do it later. I just send that thing to note plan. And then when I'm going back through my tasks, I'm like, oh yeah, I needed to read this article or I needed to do X, Y, Z. Okay, so now let me show you a simple daily workflow. So this tends to be how I work. I'm gonna go ahead and option click another day. So I have two notes side by side and I'm gonna just show you how I do my evening review. I'm gonna start with that. Say that it is the evening of December 24th and I'm getting ready for the next day. I'm going to go ahead and insert my template. I have my typical day there. Now you can auto insert these templates. So let me undo that. You'll see here that I could have auto insert and so it just inserts every day. I'm not gonna go into that, but a lot of people love the auto insert template. I personally just find it easier to just insert my template every day because sometimes I change things up. I do a lot of dragging and dropping from day to day. So this is just how I personally work. I don't use the auto insert template. I'm gonna add my typical day right here and then say that I finished this, but I don't get to this. I just would drag this from here here to here and that's how I start setting up my next day. The quick and easy of my workflow is as simple as that. I have yesterday open, I option click tomorrow and then I drag and drop from day to day. Some days like this meeting, 
well, if it didn't happen today, maybe it has to wait till next Wednesday because I only meet with that person on Wednesdays. So then I can just quickly option click. I usually insert my template at that point, but you could just move it in also and then insert your template later. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. If you don't want to actually open the day, you can also move it onto the calendar. If you're holding down shift, it will automatically move it or you can choose if you want to move link or schedule. I always use move. Very soon, this is going to actually allow you to choose which heading you want to move it under also right now that option does not exist but soon it is going to exist so that's usually the way that I do things I have this task notes and reminders I tend to have level four headings under this to organize myself but at this moment in time I have like one big project that I'm working on so I have less projects to keep track of which during other phases of my work I have a lot of projects to manage so my workflow might look a little different right now I have like one major big project that I'm working on so I just keep noting certain tasks that I have to do on a daily basis and I just really rely on my daily notes a lot for that and then every day I do a writing task and then I also track some health things so that's why I have it set up like that I know that this part of the video is extremely underwhelming because that's like literally all I'm doing at this point. I am typing in my tasks that I have to do on a daily basis. At the end of the day, I put two notes side by side and uh, I move things that didn't get done. That's really it. Let me show you one sample meeting note because this is how I handle meetings. So if I have meetings, I go ahead and I say like meeting, I put an app for the person that I'm meeting with. I then just put the general topic here and then I put the meeting date as a reference. So I'm referencing it to my December 24th note, which is why I see it up here at the top. Then going into the meeting. So let's say, let me do it again. Say that I'm going to then meet with this person again and I put the newer meetings at the top. I'm going to meet with this person again on the 31st. So I usually set it up by just having my discussion points and I set this up ahead of time. I put all my discussion points that I wanna remember for the meeting. I'll also put any links that I really need. Then during the meeting, I type under the notes section. Then after the meeting, I do a follow-up and that's where I put whatever I see from my notes that needs to be done, I add them as tasks. I do date the ones that I know have a date the ones that I do not know that have a date, I either leave it blank or I just put a date that's like a week in the future. So I make sure that I go back to this note and I don't just forget about it. If I don't put any date, sometimes it's quite easy to forget that there are open tasks here. So I try as much as possible to put some kind of a date there. Then I always have a section that's reminders for next meeting. And so that's usually what I start for my discussion points. I look at whatever notes I had in this section particularly, and I add them to my discussion points for the next meeting. Now here, for example, I said for my first task, send out meeting summary, and that should happen on the 24th. So it shows up in my reference section, but I also like that to actually show up in my daily note. I don't know, sometimes I just lose track of the things on the reference. Now there are multiple ways to move this, I personally press option and I drag it down, which makes a copy. And that's the way I like it. There's a way to do it with synced lines. There's a way to just move it entirely. I don't like either of those methods. Personally, I like it to produce a copy. So if I check this, it is separate from checking this. So you do have to check it in both places if you wanna use my method. The reason that I don't like the synced lines personally is if I pull it in, command and pull it down, so that creates it as a synced line, it takes the date away in my actual meeting note. I don't see the date there. Of course, if you click down here, you'll see what date it was assigned, but I just personally don't like it that way. It is nice that it's synced because if I add context, it also adds context here. And if I check it off, it will check off in both places. But again, that's just personally not my cup of tea. So I option and pull it down instead to make a copy. All right. The last thing I want to show you is how to track projects with this newer card and Kanban view. And I use it just to track some tasks. So here, let's look at these sample tutorials that I need to create and share. It's kind of hard to just look at it all in a list like this. But if I click here, then I can put it in a card view. And then that's very easy to see where everything is in the pipeline. So let me show you how I set this up. So I'm actually going to just delete everything that I have to start from scratch. 
Now I left these tags at the top. They do not need to be there. They're actually completely not functional, but they're just like reminders to me about my naming conventions. So that's the only reason they're there. I have things here by, I have some tutorials to make for app A and I have some tutorials to make for app B. I personally put app A in front of each of the ones for app A and the same for app B. That's probably redundant as I'll show you in the next step, but do whatever works for you. All right, so how do these states work? In order to get to the card view, you click on the folder itself. Make sure your view is in card view and I'm doing it by task. You can also use it by notes, but I'm doing it specifically for tasks. First of all, filter. Note title, I only want this for my sample tutorials to create and share, not for that other note that I was showing you before. So I just clicked that note specifically. The next thing you'll see that I have which heading it's under, I have that by going under properties and currently that's all I have checked is that you can see the heading. If I have it unchecked, you would just see the tasks. Again, I'm showing the heading. That's why I was saying probably redundant that I name each of them with the app, but I kind of like it like that. So how do I get started? To get started, I'm going to use these different states and the stages that they're in. So you just type that out and you can use whatever language you want. Like Edward showed this in a video and he showed them as each like to do's and then he put in parentheses whatever he wanted. But I like to say what state it's in the stage is to script. So I'm just going to randomly use the ones that you see up here and I'm gonna randomly put them on a couple tasks so that I can show you how I can then sort them by the headings because you'll see they start popping up. So let me show you how that works. Now that I've typed them in, I'm also actually going to add in some assignee. So assignee me, assignee person A. So now if I go back here, I kind of already have it set up from the past, so let me take everything out. Okay, I think it would look something like this when you're getting started. Click on group because you wanna group it by this stage. So I have all the different stages here. That's why I said don't worry too much about, I just put in like the different stages that I wanted for the first four tasks so that they would be options that I could put it under. Now this might not be in the right order. For example, I want to script to be first, so I'm going to move that to the left. Then the next thing is to record. So this is a one-time setup. You set it up once and then it will stick. To script, to record, to edit, and then to publish. You can also actually save these views. So if you want multiple views that you save, you can save them. But I'm just gonna set this up one time. So then I'm gonna move each of the tasks that I have into the categories that they belong under right now. Obviously, if I'm just getting started, I would put them under all under to script because that's my first step in my process. Then I can choose how I want to sort them. I want to actually sort them by heading. You could just sort them by line order if you wanted or by heading there. To get this heading thing to show up here, you can also move them as you can see. Go to properties and I have heading currently selected, but I also want my assignee to be selected so that I can see who it's assigned to. If I need to change the person, I can actually just change it from this view here. And you'll see that everything is also reflected here. All the states have been filled in. So the reason it has a number is to show which chronological order it is on the list. And then we have our stage to script, to record, all of that good stuff is right there. And then you can see the assignee. I could change it here. So I can say here that I wanna change it to person A, or as I showed you before, you can just do it from this view and you can select. If you need more people, you just need to add it to one of the tasks. So that's how it works. You could have like some dummy tasks at the beginning to set this all up, but that's kind of why I just left this at the top here to remind me of my different stages that I wanted. And so I can replicate this process more easily. And again, it's a one-time setup. And then after you do it, it's very easy to just drag and drop. So as I'm working on this, and let's say I worked on this video, so I'm ready to record it, you just move it on over. And it's an easier view to look at than just seeing everything in a list view all the time. So that's a new addition that I just wanted to show. Other than that, I don't really have anything major to share with you that's different from my workflow from last year. I will link that video again because it's still pretty relevant. Nothing has changed too much. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that below. But otherwise, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you're enjoying Note Plan. And if you have any ideas for me, please leave them in the comments or reach out to me in Discord directly. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.